From the development of Afrobeat in the early 90s all the way to 2023, the gen has continued to rank among the greatest and most popular music gens of all time. Let's go through the evolution of the legendary gens called Afrobeat and Afrobeats. What is Afrobeat? Afrobeat is a music gen that fuses African music with Black American influence to produce a compelling hybrid of culture and sound. The gen is largely the creation of Nigerian artist Fela Kuti, who with his band Africa 70 forged a rhythmic mix of West African beats and American jazz, soul and funk, which was shot through with a potent stick of political awareness. Kuti's music lit the fuse for Afrobeat, and the touch was carried forward by a mix of African artists like Kuti's former drummer Tony Allen. In the West, performers Brain Eno and David Bryan from the Talking Heads drew on Afrobeat for their groundbreaking album Remain in Light, which was released in the year 1980. Listeners can still hear Kuti's influence in the music of his sons, Femi Kuti and Shion Kuti, and modern Western band like the Grammy-winning Antibalas. Afrobeat music is frequently labelled as Afrobeats, an umbrella term for a far-ranging music scene from West Africa and United Kingdom, which incorporates many popular music styles. The two sounds share all a common heritage. Molu white driver, him get him power over him boss and conductor everywhere. Here is a brief history of Afrobeat. The history of Afrobeat began in the early 20th century, when musicians from Ghana combined West Africa regional music with Western jazz and calypso. The resulting new sound became known as High Life, which continued to fold additional Western influence into its early mix over the next few decades. Kuti and Africa 70 carve out the sound. Nigerian musician Fela Nicola Okuti, who began his career playing in an array of African high life and jazz bands, absorbed the sound of soul, jazz, soca, and reading and blues during various tours of America and the United Kingdom. He then unleashed this formidable creation in his band, Nigeria 70, debuting his unique new musical style in the early 1970s. Development of the core sound and politics. With their debut album Zombie, Kuti and Africa 70 established the core sound of Afrobeat, which freely mixed jazz and high life with the epic funk of James Brown, reggae and Caribbean rhythm, and psychedelic rock. Kuti sang over track in English and Yoruba, leading the band on saxophone, keyboards, and other instruments. He also lent Afrobeat a political side of criticizing the human rights record of Nigeria and United States on record and in his marathon live performance. And the second election all in Nigeria. And the second election that like was a past. Continuation under Egypt 80. Kuti remained a major artist in Africa and abroad until his death in 1997. His son Shinwu renamed the band Egypt 80 and continued to record and perform, as did Shinwu's brother Femi, who enjoyed a degree of popularity similar to that of his father. Afro-Funk is born The most successful figure from Kuti's orbit was undoubtedly drummer Tony Allen, who expanded on the Afrobeat sound by mixing in elements of hip-hop, dub, and electronica to form a new subgen called Afro Funk. Allen enjoyed even wider exposure than his former band leader through collaborations with Hair, Zap Mama, and Damon Alban of Blur, among others. Crack 
crossover influence. The work of Fela Kuti and Allen was the bedrock of Afrobeat. But jazz musicians like Roy Ayers also recorded Afrobeat inspired music in the 1970s. Ayers taught Nigeria with the elder Kuti in the late 70s. Contemporary artists like Antibalas and Zongo Junction, both hailing from Brooklyn, New York, have carved careers out of Afrobeat sound. Mainstream rock and soul bands like TV on the Radio and Budo's Band have also recorded songs with an Afrobeat flavor. Before we continue, I wouldn't like to confuse you guys, cause some of you might be wondering if Afrobeat and Afrobeat, the one with the S, are the same. Here are the real difference between Afrobeat and Afrobeats. Many people think Afrobeat and Afrobeat are the same, especially with the dissemination of African music to new listeners beyond the shores of the continent in recent times. Music from Africa is diverse and inclusive, led by gens of various regions. These include the Amapiano of the South, Bongo Flavor of the East, Chabi of the North, Afrobeat of the West, and Sokus of the Central Region of the continent. However, Popular African music in recent years is often been tagged as Afrobeat by giants of global music industry and some music fans as well, disregarding the uniqueness and originality of various genes inaccurately or purposefully classified under it. The recently launched Billboard US Afrobeat chart is a perfect example. A non-Afrobeat record like Kweku the Traveler by Ghanaian artist Black Sheriff, the fifth song on the chart has been boxed in the same category as Finesse by Fuse on a supposed Afrobeats chart. Observations like this prompt the question, is Afrobeats more of a culture than gen? This will be a topic for another day. Just stay tuned into my channel. Before Abraham, they were men. Permit me to use these words. Prior to Afrobeats, African music has constantly been taking shape. Legends like Fela Kuti, Sir Victor Wafer, Miriam Akiba, King Sonia Ade, amongst others, have been exhibiting the beauty of African music at different levels. During the Afro-Mentioned era, the Afrobeat gen was a major player in African music sphere, and its major proponent was the legend Fela Olufela Olushegun Oludotu Ramson Kuti, popularly known as Fela Kuti. Developed in the late 1960s, it had a salient influence on the contemporary Afrobeat style. What is Afrobeat? The one with the S. The definition of Afrobeat is quite subjective. Some would argue that it is more of a culture, while others will lean more towards the term being a music gen. The definition has seen different perspectives from different people. Why some see Afrobeat as an overarching term for contemporary West African music, others see it as a specific gen of music. They have also described it as an umbrella of popular music in West Africa. Sand of Alexander made the remark that Afrobeat gets its distinct sound from a couple of different influences. She said, The style is anchored in West African music styles, particularly high life music, American jazz, and funk, creating a hybrid sound from across the continent. The writers at Masterclass see Afrobeat as a loose affiliation of popular music that draws on African and Western music, including Juju, Dancehall, Soka, Ninja Beats, House, and Hip Life. The Afrobeat conversation cannot hold water without the likes of Two-Face, The Banj, and P-Square in the mix. Prior to artists like Bronner Boy, Whiskey, Davido, Flavor, Mr. Easy, Rema, CK, and others, they had the games unlocked for years, with three decades between them. Afrobeat is currently the biggest gen in and from Africa right now. It has gained a numerous success and acceptance in different parts of the world. Charting in Europe and the Americas, it has earned platinum and gold certification in the United States, United Kingdom, France, the Netherlands, among many other countries. Love Wantinti by CK, arguably the most successful Afrobeat record of all time, is currently three times platinum in Canada and Portugal. Platinum in the United States, Australia, Poland, Austria, Italy, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. The record also has good certification in Germany, Spain, and Denmark. Whiskey's Essence, assisted by Thames, is another all-time successful Afrobeat record. 
released in 2020 under the critically acclaimed Made in Lagos. The song has earned multiple certifications and a Grammy nomination for Best Global Music Award Performance at the 64th Annual Grammy Awards. Burner Boy, one of the poster's boys of Afrobeat, has been nominated and won the Grammys in 2021. He became the first Nigerian to win to earn a Grammy win since Baba Tunde Olatunji in 1991. He is also the first Nigerian to do it with his original work. The likes of Baba Tunde Olatunji, Siriku Adipoju, and Whiskey all earned the Grammy going for their contributions to foreign works. The past few years have been phenomenal for Afrobeats, marking an important crossover moment in the gen's history. Many of us have been fortunate to witness its frontline artists get Grammy wins and nominations, platinum and gold certification in the United States, Canada and Europe, and the concerts held in major cities of the world. Big shout out to Bonner Boy. In case you missed the Bonner Boy show, check my channel, the full video is here. And any other show you might have missed, whether Whiskey or David O's show, Mayo Kun, check my channel, you'll find the videos there. Afrobeat and Afrobeat Beauty in Disparity The difference between Afrobeat and Afrobeat exceeds the letter S that distinguishes both genres. Although Afrobeat influenced Afrobeat, there is a disparity between both genres. Afrobeat, the one without an S, is a genre of music that came in the late 1960s by the legend Fela Kuti. He was revolutionary. His music was a tool for social activism, and it was about politics, oppression, revolution, education, and so on. Afrobeat songs can run 10 minutes long, and they are best performed live. It is not fast-paced, intended to be consumed in a rush. Afrobeat was and is predominantly used as a tool for social activism. Afrobeat follows an entirely different route. While on the other hand, Afrobeat, the one with an S, is more focused on the delivery of melodious beats that draw in crowds. As people move their bodies to the rhythm, it is highly percussive. Sometimes there is auto tune, but most times it's about dancing, it's about joy, it's about joy da viva, it's about life, it's about spending, it's about partying. It is very rare that Afrobeat itself is political. It's more about let's dance, let's be happy. Popular music themes for Afrobeat artists include love, money, and sex, accompanied by a wonderful combination of sounds that are irresistibly dance-worthy. Most clubs in the UK as well, in the US, have been recording a continuous increase in the demand of Afrobeat's tight sound to be played regularly as it is the rave of movement in the world of music. You might be wondering, since the legend Felakuti, popularized Afrobeat, who then popularized Afrobeat, the one with an S. The term Afrobeat was first used in the UK in the early 2000s to describe the new wave of West African music that was emerging at that time. The S was added to reflect the gen's fusion of African rhythms with Western pop, hip-hop, and R&B. The gen was popularized by Nigerian musicians such as The Banj, Two-Face, Wandeko, Don Jazzy, Whiskey, Davido, Bronner Boy, and so many others. Some even came up in different styles, like mixing reggae kind of styles back then. After all, Afrobeat is a gen of more than one sound. Here is how Afrobeat became popular in UK Azonto and Dance Chris. Ghanaian British artist Fuse helped popularize Afrobeat in the UK. He was also the first to top iTunes World Chart and received the Best African Act Award at the 2013 Mobile Award in 2009. Fuse described his sound as hip-hop with an African vibe in 2011. Fuse urged traveled to Ghana, where he discovered the Azonto dance and became inspired by hip-hop influenced Afro-pop and Niger beats. Once he returned to London, he fused the sound he had found in Ghana into what he described as Afrobeats, with my UK thing added to it, fusing the sound with influence from UK funky and grime in 2012. He saw his first success with his song, Antenna. Which peaked at number 7 on the UK single chart. He followed that up with Azonto. Then he showed me the latest. We walk over them haters. What you do, my Azonto? Azonto, Azonto. 
which further helped popularize Afrobeat and dance in the UK. Short song and Azoto dance craze helped encourage Black British to embrace their Africa heritage rather than as was the norm be before, attempting to fit into British Caribbean community. Afrobeat nightclub became primary feature of UK nightlife, with clubs opening in most major cities. More viral dances would follow, which played an important part in popularizing Afrobeat. In 2011, Nigerian singer Inyanya released Kokere. The song became popular and known for its adaption of a traditional dance called Itigi. Another dance was popularized by Nigerian artist Davido when he released Skele Woo in 2013. Davido promoted the song by uploading an instructional dance video of it onto YouTube on August 18, 2013. The video was directed by Jazzy Generation. The release of the instructional video accompanied the announcement of Skele Woo dance competition. In order to win the competition, Participants were told to watch the instructional dance video and upload video of themselves dancing to the song. According to Pulse Nigeria, the number of dance videos uploaded on YouTube by fans had created over 100,000 views. Other British Afrobeat artists also emerged around 2012-2013, such as Mr. Silver, Vibe Squad, Wear Entertainment, Naira Mali, Quams, Flavor, Mologo, and Timbo who collectively sent the foundation for future UK Afrobeat and its derivative gem. Afro Swing, Mr. Silver's songs Bo Won Se Man Me and Boom Boom Ta were, not were notably early hits in the UK Afrobeat scene. Mr. Silver and Scob credited Fuse Odd Azonto song for encouraging them to create Afrobeat. More dance moves were also created into the Afrobeat music industry. Innocent to Dime, Better known as MC Galazi, is a Nigerian singer and songwriter. He rose to fame after winning the Davido Dance Competition in 2012. On 19th March 2014, he released his first single, Sekem, under his label, MCG Entertainment. In recent years, there has been a lot of discussion about the origins and evolution of Afrobeat. While some have argued that artists such as The Band and Two Face were the pioneers of this gen, others have pointed to Peace Square as the true tribalizer. In this article, we will explore why Peace Square, not The Band or Two Face, opened the way for Afrobeat. Don't forget, we've dominated the industry for a long time. We held it down. We held it down. I remember 13, 14. 14 years, we were there, up there. In fact, we started tra doing traveling around the world, doing the stadiums, doing everything. People fainting, people crying, signing multi-million dollar deals. We were never the type of artist that looked down on anybody. If you remember, there's a video that went viral where we had, it was Peace Square concert and this kid was a Open, open it for us. So they kept on interviewing the Peace Square. Like, okay, guys, hold on. What about him? They said, they, I said, no. This guy is going to take over tomorrow. Peace Square, consisting of identical twin brothers, Peter and Paul Okoye, burst onto the Nigerian music scene in the early 2000s with their unique blend of R&B, hip hop, and traditional African rhythms. Their debut album, Last Night, released in 2003, was a commercial success and paved the way for their subsequent albums which would go on to become some of the best-selling records in Nigerian music history. One of the reasons why P Square deserves credit for opening the way for Afrobeat is the ability to fuse different genres of music in a way that was both innovative and accessible. While the band and Two-Face were also experimenting with blending different styles of music, P Square's approach was more cohesive and polished. Their music had a distinct sound that was instantly recognizable, yet flexible enough to incorporate new influence and trends as they emerged. Another factor that sets P Square apart from other Nigerian musicians of their era is their international appeal. Unlike the band and Two Face, whose success was primarily limited to African continent, P Square achieved worldwide recognition and popularity. They were the first Nigerian musicians to perform at the Apollo Theatre in New York City. 
and their music videos were regularly featured on MTV Biz, a music channel that catered to audiences across Africa and Europe. Peace success also paved the way for other Nigerian musicians to follow in their footsteps and achieve global fame. Artists such as Davido, Whiskey, and Burna Boy all cited Peace Square as an influence and inspiration and have built upon the foundation that Peace Square laid with their innovative approach to music. Look up to these guys a lot, man. When they came out, you know, like I used to just be like, ah, Peace Square, man. I used to look up to them. So I like the cat out of the bag already. So we are at Peace Square's club and I'm going in right now. They're going to be hosting me today, so I'm about to have fun. This is my dream right here. So we're going in. Yeah. Ah. Wow. I'm at the house right now. See you later. While the band and Two Face are undoubtedly important figures in the evolution of Nigerian music, it is P Square who deserves credit for opening the way for Afrobeat. Their ability to fuse different genres of music in a way that was both innovative and accessible, their international appeal, and their influence of subsequent generations of Nigerian musicians all serve as a testament to their legacy as stabilizer for Afrobeat gen. So guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Afrobeat then continued to gain recognition all over the world with great artists doing their things. We also had some group of people called Mohit. Mohit record, popularly called Mohit, was a Nigerian based music record label owned by The Banch and Don Jazzy. According to Nigerian's Corporate Affairs Commission (CAC), Mohit Record Limited was founded in 2006, signing the band as its first recording artist. Don Jazzy was the CEO, president of the label, and the band was the co-owner. The label went on to sign other artists, including one co, Dr. Seed, The Prince, and K Switch. The label specialized in Afrobeat. First album released by the label was The Band No Long Term in 2005. Other albums are Rundown and The Entertainer, The Bunch, Moshi to Mohit, Wandeko, and Turning Point, Dr. Seed. The label has also released compilation album called Mohit All Stars. Don Jazzy has won various awards, including Nigerian Music Award NMA as Producer of the Year in 2006 and Nigerian Entertainment Award Music Producer of the Year in 2007. The label has also attracted foreign interest from international artists like Kanye West and Jay-Z and the band got signed to Kanye West's good music. The label is no longer in operation as Don Jazzy moved on to open Mavis record label and the band started up DB record label. <laughs> 2005 also gave birth to Nigeria superstar Simaya who has also left a big mark in the history of Afrobeat. Yes, we can't talk about Afrobeat without mentioning this man. What made him unique was also his ability to tell stories in his song, just like Fela Kuti. Timaya is a multiple award-winning Nigerian singer and songwriter. He hails from OD Bayosa State, South South Nigeria. Timaya became one of Nigeria's most popular performers by combining Nigerian pop with elements of dancehall, hip hop, and soca. Dubbed the king of Afro soca music gen, Timaya is well known for his blend of Afro dancehall music and other music gens. He is the founder of DM, The Mama Record Limited, which he is also signed into. His solo career began in 2005 with the release of The Mama which was an account for the massacre that happened in his community, O.D. Biosa State, which also appeared on his debut album, True Story, released the following year. His second album, Gift and Grace, was also released in 2008. His third studio album, The Rebirth, was released in partnership with Black Body Entertainment and had a lead single, Plantain Boy. Both were commercially successful. If you would ask anybody back then, 
they will tell you that Afrobeats became more of storytelling, where the world got to know more about Africans, their people, and culture. Early 2000s gave birth to Mad Melon, who is now late, and Mountain Black, the draw was popularly known as Danfo Drivers. I'm sure many of you might be wondering why they made it to this list, cause you know their music to be Galala. But yes, we are not just talking about Afrobeats, right? I want you guys to know what influenced the gen and made people hungry to make music. Mad Melon and Mountain Black are not strictly Afrobeat artists, but their music influenced the development of Afrobeats and was popular in Nigeria. Mad Melon and Mountain Black's music was characterized by its unique fusion of different styles of music such as Juju, Apala and High Life, influenced the development of Afrobeats. Their music was popular in Nigeria and beyond and helped to shape the sound of Nigerian music. Many contemporary Nigerian artists have cited Mad Melon and Mountain Black as an influence on their music, so it's fair we add them to this list. Mad Melon and its partner, Mountain Black, became prominent after the release of their mainstream dancehall tune, I Am A Daffo Driver. It was only natural for them to adopt the name to name their debut song similarly. What is there not to love about Danfo Drivers? Its lyrics is authentically from the bus stop and its sing-song chorus was an easily sing-along song. It was also chronicle of their everyday hustle as Danfo Drivers in the unforgiving street of Lagos, Nigeria. Anyone who had been inside the Danfo, Lagos' most enduring means of transportation, would certainly understand the song better. It talked about the way of life in the ghetto and slums of Lagos, Nigeria. Danfo is a privately owned minibus or van hired to carry passengers. They also dropped another hit song named Iamio, which was about love and respect that artists have for their mothers. The lyrics of this song express gratitude to their mothers for their love, care, and support and emphasize the importance of family. Songs like Danfo Driver were evergreen. It doesn't matter what year you listen to them. It has over 1 million plus views on YouTube with active viewers who really knew the world and the real process of Afrobeats. Here are some comments on YouTube. We don't search for old music, we search for old memories. Bring back good memories. Legend never really dies. Even after 20 years, I will still find this song. Those guys are real giving us confidence. Not this day musical, they are after money. We also add Wakonzi with his hit song, I Celebrate. I Celebrate is an uplifting song that encourages listeners to celebrate life and all its joy. The lyrics emphasize the importance of positivity, hard work, perseverance, and encourage listeners to pursue their dreams and overcome obstacles. The song of beat tempo and catchy melody make it popular choice for celebration and parties. Movement of Afrobeat was becoming very popular and successful. Two Face Idibia, also known as Tubaba, is a Nigerian singer, songwriter, and record producer. He is also one of the most successful and well-known musicians in Nigeria and has won numerous awards for his music. Two-Face is known for his unique blend of Afrobeat, R&B, and Hip-Hop and he is socially conscious lyrics, which often addresses issues such as corruption, poverty, and inequality. Some of his most popular songs include Africa Queen, True Love, If Love is a Crime. In addition to his music career, Two-Face is also known for his philanthropic work, particularly his support for education and youth empowerment.
You are my African queen. Not to waste more of your time. A lot of artists started hopping into Afrobeat chain. We have artists like Sam Sultan, who is now late but will forever be remembered. Just like Two-Face, he also addressed issues such as corruption, poverty and inequality. We also had another hit song called Yauze. Yauze is a popular song by Nigerian musician Olu Menten. The song was released in 2007 and quickly became a hit in Nigeria and other African countries. However, we won't be talking much about this song because the song has been criticized for promoting illegal and unethical behavior and for glamorizing fraud and corruption. In 2010, Afrobeat was still relatively niche gen, primarily popular in Nigeria and other African countries. However, this began to change with the emergence of new artists such as Wizkid, Davido, Olamide and Bruno Boy, who brought a fresh sound and style to the gen. These artists blended traditional African rhythms and instruments with modern pop and hip-hop influences, creating a new sound that was both uniquely African and globally appealing. Let's quickly talk about these four giants. Whiskey is one of the most successful and influential artists in the Afrobeat gen, and he has played a major role in its success both in Nigeria and around the world. Whiskey, whose real name is Ayodeji Ibrahim Balogun, first gained fame in Nigeria in the early 2010s with the release of his debut album, Superstar which featured hit songs such as Holla Cho Boy and Don't Do. In addition to his music, Whiskey is also known for his collaborations with other artists, both in Nigeria and around the world. He has worked with international stars such as Drake, Beyonce and Chris Brown helping to introduce Afrobeat to a wider global audience and paving the way for other African artists to achieve international success. Whiskey's influence on Afrobeat can be seen in many other artists who have followed in his footsteps, blending traditional African rhythms with modern pop and hip-hop influence to create a sound that is both uniquely African and globally appealing. He has also helped to inspire a new generation of African artists who sees him as a role model and symbol of African creativity and cultural pride. Overall, Whiskey's contribution to Afrobeat have been instrumental in its success, both in Nigeria and around the world. His music has helped to divide the gen, and his collaborations with other artists have helped raise its profile and introduce it to new audience. If you're also interested in getting to know more about Whiskey, make sure to check my channel after this video. I have a video concerning Whiskey, everything about Whiskey. Don't forget to check it out. Then Whiskey was like, young, he was really young, but like I remember like him just coming up in the game. So the game was coming up, and I remember that moment I was like, I want to do Nigerian music. David Adeleke, popularly known as David Do, is a Nigerian Afrobeat artist as well. He rose to fame after releasing Damiduro, the second single from his debut studio album, Omo Babolowo, released in 2012. Davido's music has been a significant contributor to the rise of Afrobeat in recent years. With catchy beats and relatable lyrics, he has won over fans worldwide. His music videos are also visually stunning and showcase the vibrant Nigerian culture. Davido's music often incorporates elements of traditional Nigerian music, such as high life and Fuji, with modern Afrobeat and pop. 
He has collaborated with many other popular Nigerian artists as well as international stars like Chris Brown, Lee Baby and Nicki Minaj. Davido has signed several artists to his record label, Davido Music Worldwide, popularly known as DMW, including Dremu, Meoku, Peruzi, and Laya. These artists have all enjoyed success in the Nigerian music industry and have helped to further cement DMW's reputation as one of the country's leading record labels. Dremu is known for his unique style of rap music, while Meoku is known for his soulful melodic songs. Peruzi is known for his songwriting abilities and have col collaborated with many other popular Nigerian artists. Laya is a relatively new addition to DMW roster, but has already made a name for herself with her soulful vocals and unique style of music. All of these artists have been recognized with awards and nominations for their music and are widely regarded as some of the most talented and innovative artists in the Nigerian music industry today. Olamide is an Afrobeat artist from Nigeria who first gained popularity in Nigeria in the early 2010s with the release of his debut single, Eniduro. The song received widespread airplay and helped to establish him as a rising star in the Nigerian music scene. Since then, he has continued to release hit songs and collaborate with other popular artists. He is known for his unique style of music, which blends traditional Nigerian music with modern Afrobeat and hip hop. Olamide has released several hit songs and albums and has won numerous awards for his music. Olamide is known for bringing several popular dance moves to the Afrobeat gen, including the Shakiti Bobo dance. The dance involves a series of quick rhythmic movements that are typically performed to a beat of fast paced Afrobeat song. The Shakiti Bobo dance quickly became a viral sensation and has been widely imitated and celebrated by fans of Afrobeat music. He also introduced Likesh to Afrobeat. Likesh is an artist who signed to Alamide's record label popularly known as YBNL. Under this label, Kesh dropped a series of hit singles such as Shoki and Efe Jokuni. Shoki was also a dance move which went global. He is widely regarded as one of the most successful and influential Afrobeat artists of his generation. He is called the father of all, because he helped nurture most of the new cats in Afrobeat now, artists like Fireboy, Portable and Ashake. Bonner Boy is also a Nigerian Afrobeat artist who rose to fame in the early 2010s with the release of his debut single, Like to Party. The song received widespread airplay and helped to establish him as a rising star in the Nigerian music scene. But the fame wasn't for a long time. According to blogs, Bonner Boy had died down for some time not until the Kanye West effect. It all happened when Kai's album title accidentally led fans to Bonner Boy's Ye. In case you haven't heard, Kanye West released his album called Ye and Bonner Boy released an album with a lead single to also be called Ye. Bonner Boy has seen major increase in streams for Afrobeat anthem Ye from his album Outside due to folks searching for Kanye's album by the same name and stumbling upon his song instead. The artist also shared a video of him and his friends releasing in the inadvertent success of the song on social media. Thank ye, numbers up to 200%. He wrote as a caption. But if we have to be fair here, Kanye West has not played a direct role in helping Bonner Boy become famous. However, Bonner Boy's music recognized by many popular international artists, including Kanye West. In 2019, Kanye West was seen dancing to Bonner Boy's song, Ye, during a Sunday service performance in Jamaica, which helped to bring more attention to Bonner Boy's music. Additionally, 
Burner Boy has collaborated with several international artists, including Sam Smith, Stormzy, and Eddie Sharon, which has helped to raise his profile outside of Nigeria. However, it's important to note that Burner Boy's success is primarily due to his own talent, hard work, and unique style of music, rather than any individual or event. So there you go guys, we also have lots of new artists breaking records now and I'm proud to say Afrobeats have come to stay. We have female artists in the gen doing their things as well, artists like Tiwa Savage. Or Maumi. Irasta. Yemi Alade. See me. That's why my heart is a bit like Asha. Oh, there is fire on the mountain top, and no one is. And Waji. And other countries, not just Nigeria artists. There are several popular Afrobeat musicians from Ghana, including Sakodi. Stoneboy. Shatawali. Kim Promise. Becca, Wendy She, Daco Vibes, and so on. These artists have helped to contribute to the growth and popularity of Afrobeat gen in Ghana and around the world and have collaborated with so many other popular Nigerian artists and international artists as well. These are lists of some artists that you should also remember that have made Afrobeat what it is today and what it's still going to be. Listening to every one of them now, I've never been more confident in the future. Artists like Fireboy, Rema, Hot Kid. Buju Benson Ricardo Banks Tenny Portibu Sado she vibes. Big one, big two, check up, straight swinging, no handicap. We are up when they must sleep up. Odumodu Black. Man, just Baku, it be like the mirage. Quack them, and they feel like they can rise. Zlatan. Omali. I put up at my eyes, then shut my eyes. Joe Boy. Miyoku. Baby, I go take care of you, Pasina. Zinoliski. Me, I go make a man struggle for money. Liu Frosh. Mo bad. Me, me, the girl. That's it for that. Only one bad. Belash Muda. Naramali. Barry J. Bad Boy Teams. Move from side to side. Bounce and back to do all night. Up there, baby. Frankie J. Holy wah. Now you be the reason for the blessing will come my way. Ladipo, Lighter. You got my number, I go wait for your call. I need me to call, I go wait for you. Eat the button. Mm -hmm. I could dance like Ruala. See ya, Ruala. 
Avi Boys. And you see what all that we can't move up, buddy. Only one. Corey Debelo. Don't get a lot, God you win. And I don't pay my rent, God you win. Lukesh. You can love me now. Don't love me later. Sass. Victoni. Mr. Easy. Let go of My baby give me let go of uh-huh. Fuse. Skibi. Thames. Crazy things are happening. Crazy things are happening. Lax. Shantizu. I just want to know. Terry. When you go stop to the booga, oh yo, could you get a walk out? Baby, I deserve. Pato ranking. Oh my god, why not? You can do better. Sweet bedu from a boot a meta. Kiss Daniel. Let me see you. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Let me see you. Oh, lo, lo, lo. YC. Run down. CK King Perry Black Boons NSD Shake his baby, don't break it. You know that I love my girl, pet it. To make an time win. Black Sheriff. Remember my name, remember you know what traveler. The name is Greg Good the Hustler. He's been far away. Medi. Faust. It's our work. Uh, yeah. Soft work. <laughs> yeah. It's our Techno. Baby, Pana. I say you like you all. I get you all. I did cool and good. And I see 250. Come along, ETT. Giuseppe Zan. Ice Prince. Shopping in my name, you know I got bottles in my name. Shopping in my name. CDQ. Chidima. Nice. Don't be mistake. Take it by this. I come back on the game. Fino. Tina can make go pang over in a second. Every day by day I don't. Diamond Platinums. Jamu Piper. Emma Yabaga. R2 Bs, Magix, Johnny Drew, Crayon. You carry my attention when I see you step on the floor. Wait till you got Boy Spice. For like a dumb pompous. She don't get a propos. So she NBA G Boy. Should I care what did you add in a steel? Should I care what did you add in a steel? Should I care what did you add? Young John. You know I love you, but I'm always on that. No, so I'm Adi. But tonight you can call my phone. Tonight you can call me all night long. DJ, be red. Casey, this man here, Casey, also came up with his own unique dance called Limpopo. At Afrobus TV. We strive for accuracy and fairness while delivering any video to you. If you see anything that doesn't look right in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to catch more content. If you are watching this video from the future, maybe artists mentioned above are no longer on earth. Kids, remember these Afrobeat stars. Keep making documentaries about them just like me. Keep their name alive. They made African proud. Till next time. Bye.